This video, part two of my equipment series, covers the German assault guns and tank destroyers of World War II and how they were deployed. I've been forced to divide this topic into two parts, with this being part one. While translating Panzerjager into English, I've used the term tank destroyer rather than the correct phonetic German translation. This is to align with US nomenclature. When translating Ausfuhrung into English, I've used the British term Mark rather than the correct or the phonetically correct translation. The Sturmpanzer I Bison was a German self-propelled gun armed with the 15cm howitzer. It was designed to provide close support to infantry. 36 of these vehicles were organised into independent self-propelled heavy infantry gun companies numbered 701 to 706 assigned to panzer divisions in the Battle of France as follows. Company 701 to the 9th Panzer, Company 702 to the 1st Panzer, Company 703 to the 2nd Panzer, Company 704 to the 5th Panzer, Company 705 to the 7th Panzer, Company 706 to the 10th Panzer Division. Later in 1941, the same assignment was maintained for Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of Soviet Union. The 705th and 706th belonged to the 7th and 10th Panzer Divisions respectively. These were destroyed by the end of 1941. Of the remaining companies, only the 701st participated in the opening stages of the subsequent Case Blue in 1942, although it and its parent 9th Panzer Division was transferred to Army Group Centre by the end of the summer of 1942. The last reference to these vehicles is with the 704th Company of the 5th Panzer Division during the middle of 1943. The self-propelled heavy infantry gun companies consisted of six vehicles each, organised into three platoons of two vehicles. They were designed to replace the towed 15cm infantry guns in the Panzer and Panzergrenadier divisions. There were six such formations made up of Sturmpanzerwands. The Sturmpanzer II Bison was a German assault gun armed with a 15cm howitzer. The 15cm howitzer was used to act as a close support artillery and infantry support. The Sturmpanzer I, built in time for the invasion of France in 1940, had proved to be too heavy for the chassis as well as being enormously tall. The same gun was mated to the Panzer II chassis in an attempt to drastically lower its height while using a stronger chassis. The prototype used a standard Panzer II Mark B chassis when it was built in February 1941, but this was too cramped for use. The chassis was lengthened to 60 by 60 centimetres, which required adding a sixth road wheel and widened by 32 centimetres to better accommodate the gun while preserving its low silhouette. Twelve Sturmpanzer II vehicles were built by the end of 1941. By early 1942, they were shipped to North Africa, where they formed heavy self-propelled self infantry gun companies 707 and 708. They were used as close support mobile artillery, with the former assigned to Infantry Regiment 155 and the latter to Infantry Regiment 200, both part of the light, the 90th Light Afrika Corps Division. Both companies fought until the Axis surrendered in Tunisia in May 1943. There were two self-propelled infantry gun companies made up of the Sturmpanzer II, which each consisted of six vehicles. The first variant of the Grille was based on the Panzer 38T chassis, which had its engine in the rear. A total of 200, including one prototype, was produced in the BMW factory in Prague from February to June 1943. A further 10 were built in November 1943. Both versions of the Grille were intended to take service in the heavy infantry companies within the Panzergrenadier regiments inside Panzer and Panzergrenadier divisions. The most numerous vehicle was the Mark H Grille, which comprised of up to 30 companies in the Panzer and Panzergrenadier divisions. Each company consisted of six vehicles. The second Grille variant was based on the Mark M chassis, which was specifically designed for self-propelled mounts. The engine was re relocated to the centre of the vehicle, permitting the gun to be mounted in the rear. From December 1943 to September 1944, a total of 162 vehicles were produced. A further 17 vehicles were built in 1945 for an overall production of 179 vehicles. The Grille replaced the towed 15cm infantry guns, which were in the Panzergrenadier regiments. 
the sixth vehicle company was under the Panzergrenadier Regimental Headquarters and allocated as required. The next most numerous self-propelled infantry gun vehicle was the Mark K Grille, which comprised of over 20 companies in the Panzer and Panzergrenadier divisions. The 15cm SIG 33-2 Jagdpanzer 38 was a self-propelled assault gun developed using the hull of the Berger Panzer 38T recovery vehicle combined with a 15cm howitzer mounted in a lightly armoured casement. The vehicle's enclosed firing compartment was protected by 10mm of armoured plate on the fronts and flank. This vehicle was developed by BMM in Prague and intended as a replacement for the Gulair self-propelled howitzer. Some sources indicated high probability the gun was produ produced at the Alcat plant, plant in Berlin Marienfelder. 30 were built between December 1944 and February 1944 and they would have been organised in the same manner as the Gulair. The Stug 3 Mark A or SDK said 142, of which 30 were produced, plus an additional six retrofitted, by Damien Benz between January and May 1940. First used in the Battle of France, the Stug 3 Mark A was a modified Panzer III Mark F chassis, with front armour strengthened to 50mm. The last six vehicles were built on chassis diverted from Mark III, sorry, Panzer III Mark G production. The Stug 3 Mark A was employed as part of the artillery arm. They were organised into battalions and followed their own doctrine. Infantry support using direct fire was its intended role. The first assault gun battery, 640, was created on the 1st of November 1939, followed by the 659, 660 and 665 gun battery in April and May 1940. The first formations employing these vehicles were the assault gun batteries, of which up to six were formed before they were organised into battalions in August 1940. The Stug 3 Mark B, or SDK of said 142, was produced between June 1940 and May 1941, with 300 produced by Alket using a modified Panzer III Mark H chassis. The troublesome 10-speed transmission was changed to a 6-speed one. The most Forward most return rollers were repositioned further forward, reducing the vertical movement of the tracks before they were fed into the forward drive sprocket, and so reduced the chance of tracks being thrown. In August 1940, there were two assault gun battalions of Stug 3 Mark V vehicles, with each battalion consisting of three batteries of six vehicles organised into platoons of two vehicles. The headquarters formation consisted of five SDK of said 253 light observation half tracks, six SDK of said 252 light ammunition carrier half tracks, three SDK of said 251 half tracks, three machine guns, as well as a command as well as command staff. This shows the German formal organization structure of these formations in August 1940. The initial assault gun battalions were formed in August 1940 and consisted of 18 vehicles, as you can see here. The Stug 3 Mark C, of which 50 vehicles were produced in April 1941, had only minor changes. Gunner's forward viewports above driver visor was a shot trap and thus eliminated. Instead, a superstructure top was given an opening for the gunner's periscope. Idler wheels were slightly redesigned as well, but otherwise was pretty much identical to the Mark B. In March 1941, the official organisation of the Stuka batteries was increased in strength to seven vehicles each. This shows the formal organisation of the new structure dated March 1941. There were 11 assault gun brigades ready for Operation Barbarossa, as well as a number of independent batteries. Brigade strength was 21 vehicles. It's interesting to note um, there is a little bit of confusion between whether or not these formations were brigades or battalions. I suspect the brigade nomenclature was used because of the artillery routes. The Wehrmacht or the army would have probably referred to these as battalions instead. The Stug 3 Mark D was produced between May and September 1941, of which 150 vehicles were produced. This was simply a contract extension on the Mark C. Onboard intercom installed, transmission hatch locks added, otherwise it was identical to the Mark C. 
In January 1942, the Stug battery strength was increased to nine vehicles each, and the Stug brigade had one Stug attached to the brigade headquarters. This shows the new structure of the formation dated January 1942. While the strength of each battery was increased to nine vehicles, on average only half the official strength was available for action in January 1942. The official brigade strength was now 28 vehicles, although as indicated this was rarely met in combat. The Stug 3 marquee was produced between September 1941 and February 1942, of which 284 were produced. There were some superficial changes. Superstructure sides added extended rectangular armoured boxes for radio equipment. There was an increased space allowed room for addition, six additional rounds of ammunition for the main gun, giving a maximum of 50, plus an additional machine gun. One MG34 and seven drum type magazines were carried in the rear right side of the fighting compartment to protect the vehicle from enemy infantry, but otherwise was very similar to the previous version. Here is a picture of a, a very relaxed Stug 3 crew, um, probably in the desert by the looks of it. This is a Stug 3 marquee, the last of the 7.5 centimeter short barrel Stug vehicles that were produced by the Germans. In November 1942, the long barrel Stug 3 vehicles were beginning to arrive. As a result, the batteries consisted of six short barrel and three long barrel vehicles. The headquarters had four short barrel vehicles allocated to it. This shows the formal new structure dated November 1942. In 1942, a variant of the Stug 3 Mark F was designed with a 10.5 cm howitzer instead of the 7.5 cm howitzer. These vehicles are designated STU-H-42 or sturm Halbitzer 42 or SDKZ-142-2 were designed to provide infantry support with the increased number of Stug 3 Mark F-8s and Mark G vehicles being used in an anti-tank role instead. The initial 20 vehicles were built on repaired Stug 3 Mark F and Mark F-5 vehicles from the autumn of 1942 to January 1943. The STU H-42 mounted a 10.5 cm howitzer, modified to be electrically fired and fitted with a muzzle brake. This is a picture of a rather rare Sturm Halbitzer 42 Mark F. These vehicles were placed into the Stug battalions with six vehicles in each battery. The Sturm Halbitzer 42G used the Stug 3 Mark G chassis. The muzzle brake was often omitted due to the scarcity of resources later in the war. Alquette produced 1,299 of these vehicles from March 1943 to 1945. Now this shows a picture of a Sturm Halbitzer 42 Mark G. These vehicles were placed into the Stug battalions and took over the role of providing infantry support from the Stug 3 vehicles, which were increasingly being used for tank destroyer purposes. By June 1944, the assault gun brigade had grown, with each battery consisting of 14 vehicles, with the brigade consisting of 45 vehicles in total. This shows the official organisational structure dated June 1944. At this point, the Stug's role changed. Even though previously the short barrel 7.5 centimeter was still used in a tank destroyer role, the new Stugs were really dedicated to tank destroyer roles, even though the gun could still be used for infantry support. The Stug 3 Mark F, being the first of the long barrel gun versions of Stug, was produced between March and September 1942, of which 366 were produced. This was the first real upgunning of the Stug. This version used the longer 7.5 cm L43 gun. This gun fired armor piercing rounds. It allowed, al allowed the Mark F to engage most Soviet armored vehicles at normal combat ranges. This change marked the Stug as being more of a tank destroyer than an infantry support vehicle. An exhaust fan was added to the rooftop to evacuate fumes from spent shells and to which enabled the firing of continuous shots. The late version Stug 3F had its main gun, that is 7.5 cm, weapon upgraded from the L43 to the L48. This improved penetration and effective range. 
When the initial Stuk 3 Mark F was supplied, they were spread around the existing assault gun batteries, with each battery being issued three of these vehicles. The remainder were the short barrel versions. This was made official in November 1942, as indicated in earlier in this video. The Stuka 3 a Mark F-8 was produced between September and December 1942, of which 250 were produced. The introduction of an improved hull design, similar to that being used for the Panzer III Mark J or Mark L, which had increased rear armour. This was the eighth version of the Panzer III hull, thus the designation of F-8. From October 1942, 30mm Thick plates of additional armour were now bolted, while previously they had been welded, in order to speed up production. From Mark F-8, the 7.5cm L-48 gun was made standard until the very last of the Mark Gs. Due to the lack of a double baffle muzzle brake, a few L-48 guns mounted on Mark F-8s were fitted with a single baffle ball type muzzle brake used on the Panzer IV. Mark F2 and Mark Gs. Unfortunately, most of the records concerning organisational changes in the latter half of 1943 have been lost, but it's reasonable to assume the number of long barrel Stuka vehicles gradually increased in the assault gun companies. The other change was the introduction of the new Sturm Halbitzer 42 assault guns, which replaced the older short barrel Stuka 3 vehicles. The Stuk 3 Mark G was produced between December 1942 and April 1945, of which 8,423 were produced. 142 were built on the Panzer III Mark F M chassis and 173 converted from other Panzer III's. The final and by far the most common of the Stuk series. From May 1943, side hull spaced armour plates were fitted to the G model. These were primarily intended for protection against Russian anti-tank rifles, but were also useful against hollow charge ammunition and anti-tank grenades. Side plates were retrofitted to some Mark F-8 models, as they were to be fitted to all frontline Stug vehicles and other tanks by June 1943, in preparation for the Battle of Kursk. From May 1943, 80mm thick plates were used for frontal armour instead of two plates of one 50mm and the other 30mm. However, a backlog of vehicles with completed 50mm armour existed. For those, a 30mm additional armour plate still had to be welded or bolted on until October 1943. In June 1943, the Panzergrenadier Division assault gun companies followed the structure of the tank destroyer companies. These were Stug vehicles which were not part of the artillery arm. The Stug 4 SDK Z167 was a German tank destroyer variant of the Panzer IV, armed with the 7.5cm L48 gun. From December 1943 to May 1945, Krupps built 1,108 of these vehicles. 31 of the Stug 4 vehicles, or possibly even as high as 67, were converted from damaged Panzer IV medium tanks and had reduced mobility compared to the versions that were built from scratch as tank destroyers. The Stug 4 supplemented and fought alongside the Stug 3 tank destroyers during 1944 to 1945 where they were most needed. They proved to be an extraordinarily effective tank destroyer. The STU IG or Sturm Infanterie Gestatt 33B was a German self-propelled heavy assault gun used during World War II. A new, fully enclosed and heavily armoured boxy casement superstructure was built on the chassis of the Stug 3. These were organised into six vehicle battalions or platoons and designed to be used in a similar manner to the Stug 3s, but with a much heavier gun. The first dozen, few dozen Sturm Infanterie Gestütz 38Bs were delivered by the end of October 1942 and assigned to Assault Gun Battalion 177 and 244, then conducting fighting in Stalingrad. The remaining dozen vehicles could not be delivered to Assault Gun Battalion 243 and 245, also fighting in Stalingrad. After the Germans, sorry, the Soviets surrounded the German 6th Army on the 21st of November, there was no way to get these vehicles into those 
formations. Instead, the vehicles were formed into Assault Infantry Gun Battery Demonstration Battalion 57. The battalion was assigned to the 22nd Panzer Division as the Germans attempted to relieve the trapped 6th Army. The division was virtually wiped out in the fighting and the battery was assigned to the 23rd Panzer Division when it became the Assault Infantry Gun Battery Panzer Regiment 201 for the rest of the war. The last strength report to mention these vehicles lists five remaining in September 1944. The Sturmpanzer, also known as Sturmpanzer 43 or SDK of 166, or also I think incorrectly called Brumbeer, was a German armoured infantry support gun based on the Panzer IV chassis. The first unit to take the Sturmpanzer into battle was Assault Gun Battalion 216, it was formed at the end of April 1943 and transferred in early May to Amiens to train on its new assault guns. It was organised into three line companies, each with 14 vehicles and a battalion headquarters with three vehicles. In April 1943, the formal organisation was three companies of 14 vehicles and three vehicles in the battalion headquarters. However, I am uncertain if any, fort, any formation achieved this strength after the initial battalion was formed in April 1943. Assault Gun and Battalion 217 was formed on the 20th of April 1944 at the Grafenwehr training area from cadre provided by Panzer Company 40 and Panzer Training Battalion 18. Although it did not have any armoured fighting vehicles until 19 Sturmpanzers were delivered at the end of May. It departed 1st July for the Normandy front. Assault Gun Company 218 was raised in August 1944. It was sent to Warsaw, where it was attached to Panzer Battalion 302. It remained on the Eastern Front after the Warsaw Rising was suppressed and was eventually wiped out in East Prussia in April 1945. Assault Gun Battalion 219 was originally to be formed from Assault Gun Brigade 914, but its name was changed to Assault Gun Brigade 237 in September 1944. In May Mid September 94, the brigade was transferred to the Dollestein training area to reorganise and re equip. Only 10 Sturmpanzers had been received when the battalion was alerted on 15 October to participate in the German coup to forestall Hungary surrender or attempt to surrender to the Allies. Sturm Tiger, or Assault Tiger, was a World War II German assault gun built on the Tiger I chassis and armed with a 380mm rocket propelled mortar. This shows a clearly staged picture of the Sturm Tiger. Three new Panzer companies were raised to operate the Sturm Tiger. These were the Armoured Assault Mortar Company 1000, 1001 and 1002. These originally were supposed to be equipped with 14 vehicles each, but this figure was later reduced to 4 vehicles each, divided into 2 platoons of 2 vehicles each. This concludes uh, part one of my video on German assault guns and tank destroyers. I have no doubt I'll be upgrading this video in the future as I obtain new source material. I've posted some of the source material in the URLs shown there, and I've also included some additional URLs in the YouTube links. Danke Sie daran, Emmen Verhill, Heimatlinsu Kampfen.